Украинцы и украинки, из наших портов сегодня вышли три судна из зерном. Dear Ukrainians, three vessels with grain for export left our ports on August the 5th from Odessa and Chernomorsk. Almost 60,000 tons of corn are on board, which are expected by consumers in Turkey, the UK and Ireland. The first new vessel since February the 24th is heading to the port of Chernomorsk for loading. The main thing now is the constant increase in exports. Every adequate world player is interested in this. The more our grain will be on the global market, the smaller will be the harvest of political chaos in countries, primarily in Africa and Asia, but not only there. We must remember that this year the demand for imported food in Europe is much higher than expected. European harvests are smaller because of the heat, but the Ukrainian harvest of grain and oil seeds will most likely meet the forecasts. More than 65 million tons are expected. Therefore, if the partners do their part of the obligations under the grain initiative, the security part, and do not allow new Russian provocations in relation to our exports, then the food crisis, which has been so threatening to the world, can be overcome. But the situation on the energy market and especially for European consumers continues to be very dangerous due to Russia's cynical and worked out well gas blackmail. Instead of supplying gas to the territory of Europe in accordance with the contracts, Russia even simply burns it. And this is happening more than one week. Why does it do it? So that prices in Europe rise even more, so that ordinary Europeans suffer even more and so that it will be even more difficult for everyone on the continent to prepare for winter. This is a manifestation of Russia's deliberate anti-European policy, anti-human policy and the effect of the old mistakes of Europeans, who did not want to see that Gazprom, Russian gas pipelines bypassing Ukraine, are the same weapons for Russia as tanks and artillery, and each of us, each in Europe, is a target for them. And we all have to defend ourselves now, together to prepare for the new heating season, together to respond to any provocations of Russia in the energy sector, together to develop sanctions in response to Russian blackmail and terror. On August the 5th, the occupiers created another extremely risky situation for everyone in Europe. They fired at the Zaporizhia NPP twice in one day. This is the largest nuclear power plant on our continent, and any shelling of this factory is an open, brazen crime an act of terror. Russia should bear responsibility for the very fact of creating a threat to the nuclear power plant. And this is not only another argument in favor of recognizing Russia as a state of sponsor of terrorism. This is an argument in favor of applying tough sanctions against the entire Russian nuclear industry, from Rosatom to all related companies and individuals. This is purely a matter of safety. The one who creates nuclear threats to other nations is definitely not capable of using nuclear technologies safely. On August the 5th I held a meeting devoted to the sanctions policy and confiscation of Russian assets. As government officials reported, assets worth 28 billion hryvnias have already been forcibly seized in Ukraine. This work continues. More than 900 facilities belonging to the Russian state are proposed to be confiscated. And if we evaluate the property package not only for the terrorist state, but also of its residents, then these are 36,000 items for seizure. All these will be sent to compensate for the damages that Russia causes through war and terror. I also heard the results of the work of the group on the development and implementations of the international compensation mechanism and confiscation of Russian assets abroad. All our partners are actively working on this. In Europe, in the United States, works on bills that will expand the possibilities for the confiscation of Russian assets for Ukraine is underway. And Donbass, burnt out by Russian strikes, the abuse of the occupiers over Kharkiv, Mykolaiv, the shelling of Zaporizhia, Dnipropetrovsk region, Sumy region, Chernihiv region, Kyiv region, Zhitomyr region, Odessa region, and other regions of Ukraine are what Russia will surely pay for both politically and financially, and with its own future, which Russia is losing with every strike on our territory. I spoke with the president of Malawi. It is another African state, the ninth country which Ukraine is in contact with for the first time at the highest level in the entire history of independence. I assured Mr. President 
that Ukraine will make every effort so that every country interested in our agricultural products can meet its consumption needs. We also discussed other issues of stability and our cooperation in international organizations. I also signed a decree awarding our soldiers. A total of 192 combatants were given state awards, 18 of them, unfortunately, posthumously. Eternal gratitude to all who is fighting for our great state. Thank you, great people of Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine.